Uh, so how can a first home buyer get you guys to work for them? Really good question. Um, and as an agent, I probably make anywhere between 250 to 500 calls a week. Now, when I'm doing that and I'm working with, with people who are looking, not just first home buyers, but buyers in general who don't know what they're looking for, it can become very frustrating and very time consuming trying to help someone who doesn't actually know what they're looking for. So in the politest possible way, I reckon the best thing someone can do is make a list of what they're looking for. Things that they are looking for, things that they're not, work out how much they've got to spend, what area they seem to like, and really speak with the agent and let them know that you know they are in a position to make a decision when they find what they're looking for. Don't give them a specific um, number of what they've got to spend more, so give them a range of what they're looking at. And I, I tell you, if, if I've got someone on my list who, who I've got an understanding of what they're looking for and they're serious, I will give them a call. The next part of that, and it's really important, is if you've got an agent who does give you a call and is a bit proactive, don't just shoot everything down they say without seeing the property because generally the agent might know a few things about it that the buyer doesn't. And if you're constantly saying no and, and got a negative response and don't have an open mind here, mm -hmm. I think it can become very quick for an agent to really give up on working with that buyer. As harsh as that sounds, it is the reality. Um, so I would like to say to first home buyers, just keep an open mind, but certainly don't buy anything that you're not absolutely happy with. So. Great advice. So you mentioned that you're just buying the first home at the moment as well, so yeah. how is it on both sides of the coin? Very interesting. So not only do I have the suit on as a real estate agent, I go out to the, to the opens having a look at homes that I'm looking to buy. I assume that within the next 12 weeks from now I will have bought my first property. Quite an interesting process. Now, um, I guess what I'd say is that the thing that I've done is I, I've gone out and found out through my real estate resources what other properties have sold for in my area. I want to know exactly what they've sold for and what they were in terms of were they renovated or weren't they, how big was the land, was it bigger or smaller, absolutely everything so that when I walk through a home and I see the advertised price, in my mind I can compare that to everything else that's sold because that's what's most important and it also means when I walk into a home that might have a few great things that I've seen in other homes they've sold for more, I know I'm looking at a good deal and I know I need to act swiftly. So um, that's the way that I've gone about it. Excellent. Yep. And just finally, is there any tips you'd like to leave us with today? Sure. Well, look, I've actually got a number of tips um, that I want to go through, but I think one of the, the, the biggest tips I, I, I want to get to straight off is it's almost like when you're playing poker. You know, when you're playing poker, you don't just lay all your cards down on the table for everyone else to see. As a first home buyer, I find that some people are very upfront and open about exactly how much they've got to spend. What you need to understand is agents in general are skilled and trained negotiators, whereas um, buyers generally are not. And if you tell a skilled negotiator exactly how much you've got to spend, very good chance when it comes to buying, they're going to be able to get that out of you because they know that you've got it. So my tip here, Chris, would be work out a range of what you've got to spend and then let the agent know that whilst you're looking in that range, you're going to weigh up every home on its own merits and work out a price on it and, and let them know that whilst you might be open to some negotiation, um, you're putting forward your best offer on that property and stay really firm to that. Um, I think that's tip number one. That one tip alone I can tell you in my experience would save some buyers 5, 10, 15, even more thousand dollars, which is quite a significant amount of money. So really keep your cards close to your chest, but always remain flexible and willing to work with the agent, but don't lay it all out on the table. Okay. Tip number one. One of the other things is make a written list of what you're looking for. And also to that, make a list of things that you're not looking for so that when you walk in a home, you can say, well, look, this doesn't quite meet what we're looking for. But I had an opportunity over the last week to catch up with um, a gentleman who's one of Victoria's number one real estate agents. And he shared some advice here that I think is really important. Most people, when they're looking at a home, are going to have 10 things they're looking for. But each home might only meet seven or eight of those things. Be prepared to compromise, but only where the house meets most of the things you're looking for and everything else feels right. Just to understand that not every house is perfect and you will maybe need to be prepared to compromise. 
Uh, I think that's quite important, uh, and it comes from one of Victoria's best, so I think that's some sound advice there. Um, one of the other tips that I'd like to give buyers is when they're making an offer, let's say the property's on the market at 300 plus. The plus in real estate is generally equivalent of 10% or so. So if you're going to make an offer, don't make it an even offer. Don't just offer 330 because the chances are other buyers are going to say, well, it's 10%, so let's just make it 330 as well. Don't make it an even number. If anything, maybe bring it just above. And one of the things I've noticed is that most people won't come up into the three. So if, if it's 330, say it's a 10%, maybe come up to 333 if you're really happy with it, and maybe a little bit more. All you want is when the offers are presented to the vendor that yours is just a little bit higher that you might you know go over the line and actually be successful in buying the home. I think that's a great tip there as well. So okay. Um, and the last tip I've got, Chris, is the internet. If you're not using, well, the demographic of first home buyers is that most of them use the internet. If um, you're not using the internet, I feel that you are at a disadvantage because as agents, once the home hits the market, it directly goes onto the internet and anyone who's looking there will see it straight away. So stay up to date. Probably the biggest site um, that, that we use is realestate.com.au, but there's also a couple of others, domain.com.au, um, realestateview.com.au and now we've also got myhome.com.au but as long as you're on realestate.com uh, we tend to find that you're probably in good hands so very good okay well thank you for this time straight Rob and I hope the viewers out there got lots of tips thank you and I hope to see you around soon no it's good luck with your home bike cheers yeah, Rob thank you very much cheers